Ooh, welcome back to Omnifactory. The site of some squid in our river. Anyway, today we're going to get started with some farming, I think. That is one of the quests that we not to, got to yet, which is the farmer. He needs some aluminium casings and dark bimetal gears, but they should be either already craftable by our system. You'll see I've got more interfaces running now. I did just confirm this, this unfortunately, the more furnaces. You can't just pull straight out of the back with Ender IO conduits, so we'll have to go probably to a Greg Tech furnace, but that's not too much of a problem either. Um, let's just get on with the, the farmer stuff. So the farmer block itself, let's just see. We need the dark bimetal gears. I did make some aluminum casings. The uh, system can make them now. So there you can see, got those. But we can also get it to craft three of these from the, the various ones that I found, the infinity biometal gear I found while exploring. So let's get that started. Uh, we can just see it's going to go ahead and doing that in the alloy smelter over there, and that should be done in a second. Otherwise, all I've really done is move uh, our recipes to an interface back here, for the most part. Uh, there's four spaces left. So once the system, in fact, we can probably move them now. Uh, I'll just fill up this space back here, and then once it fills up, we'll just end up moving this setup somewhere else. But it's fine for now. Uh, gets us going. I also just moved the wall back a little bit just because I ended up without any space, and I wanted to move this Kang machine back here. I rarely, really use it uh, because over here we've got another assembly machine, and this one is able to make machine casings without needing a wrench. So it just basically has the program circuit configuration eight. In there and we just leave it in there we don't need to touch it all it needs to do is just supply that thing with um, with plates and it will make a casing so we don't have to worry about that either there we go dark metal gears we get a farmer hopefully that will get us the quest looks like it will yep farming station good and that's the farming station so now you can see this is heading us towards the brewery <laughs> well the brewery then heads towards the distillation tower and that is also coming from the tier three circuit. So it's going to want us to make a basic brewery. You can turn plant balls and other various sugary crops, sugary crops, you say, into biomass with a brewery. Well, yes, we've already done that. Um, and this is just taking us through that same process. So we shouldn't have to do very much uh, other than just grab the stuff we've already built, which is good. So let's just pop downstairs and I should have a brewery around somewhere. Yes. This technically is taking stuff out of here, so we just grab this for a second. Whoops, give me the brewery. Thank you. And that's the brewery. We should be able to get lots of... If it just requires me to pick up each of these machines, that will be actually quite straightforward. And, uh, ooh, we just need to make sure this is reconnected to the back. Um, are you not going to let me reconnect? Why... Well, let's pop it in there and we shall just grab the item conduits and reconnect that way. No, it what? <laughs> Why won't you connect? Maybe that's just the default side and that's set to the output, isn't it? So we want to be heading this way. So I'm going to set the output going that way. And we can do that this like this. And that's connected again. Good. Except these settings probably have been broken, but let's just set that to be low priority and then everything else should carry on yep it's filled up so excuse me we don't have any problem with that so that had to cough there uh so we've got some more omni pennies and that's going to head us towards the distillation tower and we've got the mv assembler as well but we don't need that just yet um i don't need the stinking tower <laughs> a basic distillery okay if you don't feel like a distillation tower just yet you can get ethanol via a single block distillery however the distillation tower will be needed for petrochemical stuff like oil later on but it's optional for a little while longer oh well we have a uh, distillery here and uh, we have unfortunately lots of ethanol that i'd rather not lose but i don't care that much um do we have a fluid tank how much ethanol do we have over here it's probably full. It is. Yeah, so we don't care that much. The sugar cane is essentially infinite, so let's just grab you. And again, we've got to be a little bit careful. This is going to be... Not have to worry about uh, the output side. I'll get you. And uh, where's my distillery gone? There it goes. And that should start going again. And it's fine. I would have hoped. Biomass is not actually going the correct way. I'll figure that out in a little while. Anyway, quest done. And then we got ethanol. So an ethanol bucket. Well, that's handy. 
I guess I'll just go and grab a bucket from back here since I just threw away all the ethanol. <laughs> Let's grab you. One bucket. Please. There we go. And I guess we'll put it back in. Oh, too late. <laughs> guess that's one bucket down. Um, and that's done as well. Lots of quests being done over here. Sulfuric acid, bucket. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I'm going to need to just... Uh, let's just... Um, yeah. Let's just have an, an ethanol bath over here. It might, it might even evaporate if it's modeled accurately. <laughs> Regardless, uh, we have sulfuric acid. So let's just grab that. Yep. And where did my... Ah, I was going to say, did it actually dissolve the bucket? Hopefully not. Yep. We've done that one as well. And then we've got ethylene and polyethylene. Yeah, let's just get a couple more buckets, actually. And let's just make sure everything's ready. So there we go. Grab a bucket or two. Just a few of those will do just fine. And we can throw them away. We can always make more buckets at this particular point. So we want ethylene and polyethylene. So this is polyethylene. This is ethylene. So let's just grab one bucket. And one bucket of polyethylene. Oh, there's not quite enough. We need to supply this with oxygen, don't we? So let's just get my fluid tank wherever I've stored it. Did I put it in my backpack? I did not. Uh, I've got a few fluid tanks, but um, sometimes I've got water in them. Uh, that will do. Fluid tank is got nothing in it because we may as well just fill it up while it's around and use it to port stuff across. So we want oxygen. And then we can dump oxygen on this side and away it will go producing polyethylene which of course we can grab with a bucket once it actually finishes this particular thing. Now, what's actually next? It's going to lead us towards plastic sheets, which will be straightforward. And that'll take us into, uh, presumably, once we get the MV assembler. Oh, do we need the MV assembler for the SMD transistors? Presumably they're just going to be cheaper than regular transistors. And that we can get, uh, or we need to get annealed copper. So copper with oxygen and in the blast furnace. Well, we can already get oxygen from our existing setup. It has less power loss than regular copper when used as a cable and is required for more advanced electronic components. Okay, fine. Are you ready yet? Uh, you are. We should be able to get one bucket of polyethylene and that should give us a quest. And let's just dump it in here because, hey, we don't actually need anything else there. Get rid of you. And somewhere... I do need to sort this out. Let me find out why that's not actually uh, working. It's probably the output side again. Now the output side was fine. I just forgot to turn on the auto eject button in this this side of things, so that is going to be fine. And I guess we will also do the same thing for this. It technically it auto ejects at the back, not this side of it, so we're fine there. That little quest then should let us get to uh, a few more things. Let's get, get that going. Plastic sheets. We just need one polyethylene sheet. Well, that's going to be trivial. I like this quest to be able to get done this quickly. There we go, we got all that done. It's nice to be able to get um, the matter of the way anyway, and we get a lot of stuff done. So you see, we got, start to get a lot of other stuff starting to open up down here. Uh, the vertical digger is, yeah, that is actually coming. So we do actually need to do that. That'll get us 100 Omni pennies. So why don't we just look at doing that? Let me just remind myself. So the vertical digger, digger, and I did get a lot of commenters saying, hey, it's, yeah, it's actually really good. It's just a bit slow. So we'll need to do that. It's got a few things needing to be done, particularly for aluminum casings. And the system can craft those. So uh, we can just get it started. We can do that in the background. And whoops, uh, vertical digger. Uh, aside from those outer stuff, we also need this stuff in the middle. So we need this flux bore. The aluminium drill and the drill that we've already made one of before. That's going to need me to do a, a bunch of other stuff, but it's going to need stainless steel. And I don't think I've crafted too much of it, but we can actually craft uh, yeah, a little bit. One of the recipes that I don't like... <laughs> I'll tell you what I don't like in a second. Well, I'll tell you now. Um, the recipe for stainless steel, you can either use a hammer, and it's the same for all of these little gears, or you can use a mould. But... The thing is, if you go into a Greg Tech machine and put a mold in it, it's stuck there. The interface, it's not going to get ejected. So you need to have a dedicated machine for that particular thing. Now, it's all right, I guess, in this case, in that this mold small gear, whether you use an alloy smelter or a fluid solidifier or, well, you don't want a fluid solidifier, you want an alloy smelter in this case, 
or an extruder. An extruder is MV, so we can't actually have it down here. So let's just leave it for, and there isn't actually any sort of benefit other than, no, there's, there's, there's no benefit. Why, why isn't there a benefit for going? No. Okay, that, that doesn't make sense. An alloy smelter takes less energy, is done faster in low voltage than an extruder with the same ingredients, takes over four times the energy, takes 50% longer to produce the same thing. It's not like if we can get two gears out of this, I wouldn't mind too much. But if we get one, no, just stay with the alloy smelter. However, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I get off on a tangent. Um, the mold small gear is pretty much stuck there. So you need an alloy smelter dedicated to the purpose. And that's the other reason why I have this extra row back here, because I assume we may want some machines like that. We have, uh, where are we? There's our alloy smelter, but its recipes are used. This encoded pattern, don't worry about that. There's no mold involved in that. It's just two different ingredients. And these two are just two different ingredients as well. So we need extra equipment for this to go. So we may as well just have a few more conductive iron back here and have another row of these. Because this these interfaces, you'll see I've also removed the cable from the top, will pass through. There are no channels in this mod pack, so we don't have to worry about it. We'll just pass through the connection from the rest of the system. I did, however, have a problem. I'm not sure why. Maybe other people can, can send comments. Maybe you've encountered this before. If something's crafting and you press cancel on it, if you go in here and press cancel and it's crafting, the machine, the, the ingredients disappear. Gone. Deleted. Don't know where they went. Um, because I had a problem when I had this interface in a different uh, sorry, this recipe in this interface or vice versa. So I've had most of them in one interface and this recipe in another one. It was causing problems. I don't know why. Haven't a clue. Um, so all I did is combine them in the same interface and everything works again. No clue. No idea. So that's one problem. And the other problem is, is it actually right that when you press cancel, it doesn't return the materials it was part way through crafting? Because it definitely doesn't for me. Maybe you guys can test. Let me know if that's actually the case for you. Uh, I'm a bit disturbed by it because I end up losing a few of the MV robot arms <laughs> because that was part way through crafting with those, among other things. So that's not particularly nice, is it? Anyway, before we get to that stage, I'm going to need to leave some room in front of these. So we probably should move our canola thing uh, eventually, maybe up to a little bit further across, or maybe even start to set up extra pads around somewhere. Not quite sure yet. Anyway, I thought I'd just set it up here for now, and then I'll move that between episodes. So the farmer, I would assume, let me just double check, actual editions, uh, whether it's actually, th usually these things are three by threes in front of uh, the block. And yeah, it looks like it's going to need crystal flux. That should be doable with... Uh, just changing this to, let's just go down a few. If we just change this to our vibrant and we just channel this way somewhat, we should be able to get underneath here. Because it goes hollow at some point. It goes hollow at some point. <laughs> there we go. And there is our vibrant alloy energy conduit. So we'll just grab you. Grab you. Whoops, that's oh, my polyethylene sheet. Um, where's my magnet? There we go, polyethylene sheets got. <laughs> and we'll just lay out some of this cable. And it's already at the right height, so that's good. And I can just replace the earth once we're done. So let's just put one, two. Okay. Are you powering? You are powering. That's nice. Nice, easy conversion rather than regtech um, IC2 inspired intermediary battle, battery box of some kind. It's nice to have simple cabling sometimes. Anyway, so off it goes. Yeah, you can see it is working everything in front of it and replanting it. Nice. And it's actually replanting extra extra area we didn't have. Uh, OK, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, I can't put this, this worm down anywhere. <laughs> Fine. Uh, so I guess we got to think about what this actually will then harvest. So it's definitely going to harvest the canola and we have the energy conduit here. So we could do something simple like put in some item conduit 
and send it for you know storage drawers like this that probably be the easiest thing to get started um later we're going to be processing that uh, canola and let's just see what the options are for canola maybe it's only got one or two uh canola is certainly not something that we can process really maybe you have to just turn it into canola oil fluid tank there's certainly no jei recipe but i'm assuming Ah, okay. So we've got to convert it into this canola seeds all the time and then go into seed oil. Or we have the usual atomic reconstructor stuff. If you've not seen this before, you can basically use this to change um, change things. You go through an empower and that goes to empowered canola seed. And then you can get canola oil and empowered oil and, and bits and pieces like that. Well, if we just go with regular canola seeds, though, that goes into seed oil, which we can do into lubricant. That helps with a couple of the machines. Um, so lubricant is useful. Is there any other use for that? We can distill it. We can react it into biodiesel. And that's, I suspect, what we're going to be asked to do. So biodiesel and glycerol. But we need methanol or ethanol. And we have ethanol. But, but we need sodium hydroxide to do that. Eh, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so what's sodium hydroxide? Or what can we make it from? Uh, please be renewable. Mm, blocks of sodium hydroxide. Just salt water and we basically get chlorine and hydrogen out as well. Okay, fine. And that makes sense. NaOH. Fine. So we'll have to think about that some other time. Regardless, farming today. And I'm also going to get this vertical digger out. So let me craft... Some of this off camera because you don't need to see the, the previous ingredients. We'll just get to the point where that is available. Okay, I've done all the other crafting off camera now, so we should be able to just craft the vertical digger itself. It may not shift click in just because it never seems to, A2 can't really realize uh, that you have these things with various values on them. I think it's either the MBT data or something along those lines. Uh, so you do ha sometimes have to just manually move them in. But we have actually made all the pieces. There we go. And we have one vertical digger. So that's good. And it didn't even use up the drill. Mm, okay. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> if that works, that works. Are you going to give me the quest? 100 Omni Pennies? Yeah, I think so. Yep, that's great. And we can convert them just straight over into Omni Nickels. They're the sort of mo still the most useful tier for this particular point. There we go, 20 Omni Nickels. Right, so we now have a, a vertical digger. Let's just pull that down for a second. And does that actually need any kind of power? It looks like it does need power, and it's going to need power of Crystal Flux, so RF will do just fine if we can get RF to it. Uh, now there is, there are some, uh, is some ways to get wireless power in the pack. Um, but I think, uh, I could dig a comment to say there's a dimensional transceiver. Yes, it's from Ender.io. Um, okay. Uh, well, helps if I, it, yeah, I have to tap it over here. <laughs> transceiver. There we go. Okay. Uh, electrical steel's fine. Fuse quartz is fine. Octanic we've not made yet. End resonator we have not made a slice and splice yet. And that's going to need tungsten steel because that's not the standard recipe. Uh, sold machine chassis, I think we might be able to do. Solarium, somehow. Yeah, soul sand, that's the usual recipe. Tungsten steel, on the other hand, we need a head of some kind and dark steel bars. None of that's fine. Tungsten steel, tungsten steel ingots, and that needs a vacuum freezer. Yay! Um, I think that's about all we can actually do unless we can make the... Uh, we need to, uh, is HSS high-speed steel? Not sure. I imagine it is, but I, uh, not so sure. So, yeah, I'm going to have to go back through that and see if we can actually get that from something. Uh, so if we have to go through a high-speed steel G-dust, whatever that is, that's going to need a <laughs> uh, vanadium. I know I've already seen. That's definitely in, like, a vanadium alloy, uh, it's a vanadium iron rock. We've already picked that up. And I can never say this element. Is it... Hmm, maybe someone can educate me on this. Is it mol molybdenum? Ah, it's hard to say with that B in the middle. Molybdenum would be fine. Molybdenum is weird. Anyway, <laughs> that's going to have to come from an ore of some kind. Yeah, so we may be able to purchase it 
Can we just purchase it directly? Yeah, we can. So it's five Omni Nickel. So yeah, we can get a whole process into getting a dimensional transceiver, but we need two of them, remember? And that's going to need a whole excursion into Ender IO. So probably don't want that just yet. However, there are some upgrades for the vertical digger once you're able to get it going called the Phantom Booster, I think. Oh, I forgot it's on sync mode. Phantom Booster. So Phantom Face, Phantom Placer, uh, Phantom Booster. There we are. This needs Dimatine and Restonia. We can make all of that. That's fine. And an Ender Casing, which is Pulsating Iron Plate. We can make that. Ender Pearl Plate. I guess we could make that. Uh, is it just Ender Pearls? It is just Ender Pearls, so we can definitely make that. And it's just in a cutting saw, which we've got upstairs. Block of Black Quartz, however, that's a bit expensive. And uh, we need four of them per Phantom Booster. So... Yeah, that might be worth thinking about getting that from something else. So from crushed black quartz, I'll need to get it via quartzite dust. Okay, so let's maybe think about crafting three of those, maybe? And here we are, we can craft a few of these. I'm going to craft just three. I don't think it can actually support any more, according to the wiki anyway, so let's get that going. And now we have a bunch of different stuff. I want a few other things. Yeah, there's a phantom booster quest. Uh, I could do with a scanner, maybe, and let's see if we can find something suitable. So, uh, range module would be good. I don't need the chest. Common ores would probably be best here. Do we have anything nearby to us? Let's just have a look. Yeah, we do. Right here. Don't know what's included in that, but uh, I guess we're about to find out. So, uh, let's just put down the vertical digger. And... That is going to need to change to only mining ores. I don't want this to dig a vertical shaft. You can get it to do that, but please don't. Not in your base. I mean, not like this. Not like this. Okay, and we're going to need some power. So we've got a, a basic capacitor bank, and that is dumping power into this now, it looks like. Yep, that power is going up. Can store 200,000 crystal flux. I don't know how much... Uh, well, it's already started. <laughs> Gold, iron, magnetite, it's going. Oh, let's just actually upgrade it. So Phantom Booster. And we just need to put this on top, if I remember rightly. And uh, there we go. So this should dig in a much wider radius now. Each one of these, uh, I think, adds two to the radius. So, you know, you put it on top of um, something decent and it will go ahead and do that. So let's go and see how well it's doing. Uh, or at least these aren't disappearing yet. So maybe it'll take a little while. And see, it's not actually taking that much power either. I'm happy about that because that means I don't need to worry about wireless power and this thing will start producing ores. While we're there, we can just go and grab some item conduit and an ender chest. And then we can go and um, dump this wherever we like. Just get uh, item conduit. And unless this automatically outputs, I don't think it does. No, it doesn't have any options in here, so we can just do the usual thing here of uh, output and input. And hopefully, yeah, there it goes. It's going to start adding the ores to our system. So that's automated mining done. Oh, that's so nice. It's not very fast, but, you know, it is automatic. And uh, presumably it's just going to go from straight down to bedrock. So we shouldn't need to head into the caves, I don't think. But the wiki didn't say either way. So if there is a vertical limit, then we'd have to have a look at it. However, that does mean we need to look at an import bus because it's no good at going into that white chest over there and not going any further because we need it in our system. We haven't really crafted an import bus as yet, and it's going to need a couple of things. So aluminium plate and annihilation cores is fine. Uh, and we should probably... Do I have any patterns left? I do not have any patterns left. Oh, that's a shame. Can we actually craft any more patterns? Probably not. Um, maybe. Well, we can. We can. I did leave two extra sets, so that's fine. So I'm about to make some other things for us anyway, but uh, import bus. So let's just add this to the recipe so it knows about it. And this interface is filling up as well. I need to make another interface clearly soon. So if we ask for that, it's probably going to not be able to deal with the piston. We, we don't know how to make pistons as far as the system is concerned. We make robot arms, but not pistons. So we made them in batches, if you remember last episode. So uh, we need to do a piston and the MV version. Do we have anything? We're pretty much just missing aluminium and nothing else. 
Well, the aluminium is actually not too much of a problem. We can tell the system to craft for us. So we're going to need four aluminium plates. Uh, yeah, you can go. And we should be able to just make rods ourselves. Wow, we can tell the system to craft rods as well. Let's just craft two of those. Uh, no crafting CPUs. That's why I was grabbing the, <laughs> the aluminium. Let's just grab it and make a few rods. So four will do. It'll make eight rods in our lathe. Pop you in there. Uh, you just create, if you want to know how to create more recipes simultaneously, you just need more blocks of these, really. And uh, that will do the job. You can always just right click on this to see what they're actually doing at the moment. And this is all done. Plates are done. So we should be able to make that uh, piston. So one piston. Uh, and I need one plate and just do that manually. That's the only thing I haven't got done yet. Where's my plate? And just grab a hammer. Because remember, that's the same small gear recipe thing going on. Yep, one piston. And then we just tell the system to just craft um, whatever we wanted. Um, what was it we wanted again? Was well, of course the input bus. We just tell it to craft that for us. Uh, yeah, so it needs to craft basically the some annihilation course. And we'll tell it to get started. Hopefully that's not going to take it very long, however. Uh, while it's doing that, and we can have a look at here, it's only need to make one plate. Hopefully that should be really quick. Yeah, there it is, done. So bus, we've got an input bus. We've got some cable already. Let's just grab you. And that's that job done. Apart from the fact we probably want this to be fast. We don't need to be fast to get started, but later on we will be. However, before we do that, let's just go and connect this up. I should have some cable back there somewhere. So let's just get this done. Uh, this is where our old logistics pipes used to run. Yeah, here will do. And we'll just bring in some cable. Again, no need to worry about channels or anything. So let's bring you down. And let's just fill the rest of this in so that we don't have any gaps back here that things could spawn in. I mean, I've got a mega torch around, so they shouldn't spawn anyway, but um, uh, it's fine for now. And one, two, three, four. And then we just need to place the import bus. So let's just pop you down and then we can connect you up. There we go. And this should start pulling in this stuff into our system. Yeah, there it goes. It will go quite slowly, however. And we're going to want acceleration cards to actually deal with that. Acceleration cards. I think it could deal with four of them. You just need flux crystal and some advanced card. Oh, this has got a new recipe. Electrical steel plate. Oh, that's not terrible, but I don't think we have any of them. <laughs> I certainly haven't made any aluminum wire yet, but we can actually make some electrical steel plate. So, um, steel plate. I don't think we have a recipe for it. No. Okay, but we can make electrical steel. And, or we already have some electrical steel. So let's just get six of you converted over into plates. And the rest was aluminium wire, the fine kind. So that just needs double processing through a wire mill. And let's just dump a load into that kind of thing. Gonna get um, eight converted into 16 of the normal kind. And then we'll just get uh, aluminium, whoops, aluminium fine aluminium put back through and it's, well that's not quite as quick but we should start seeing uh, that going into the system and that's pretty much everything we need so acceleration card is uh, this so we have two advanced cards that'll do and then we can convert those over into acceleration cards and two will be okay for now you need the full four to make it really quick but uh, that will do for any kind of short term basis. I doubt we'll be able to overwhelm that in any short space of time. Yeah, it's already gone. <laughs> OK, so one thing we had to solve is probably some wireless power at some point, although given that I'm going to have to keep going out to wherever this digger is, uh, and this does not need terribly much, um, <laughs> much power, it seems. So, yeah, let's just grab, grab our scanner back. Is that still showing up as always or is it finished? Uh, still showing up. So, yeah, maybe they don't get removed. We'll have to go and dig down to see. And I dug one piece of grass, <laughs> one piece of grass out here, and it clearly has not got far enough out there yet. So I'm not sure whether it's going depth first searching or whether it's going width first. Well, in fact, it's got to be going depth first, I assume. So maybe it's just spiraling its way down. 
and uh, doing that pretty well. Yeah, you see it's still finding ores, so that is perfectly fine for it to just start digging and uh, keep on supplying us, really. So yeah, longer term we'll need wireless power, but it just seems like maybe we don't... Uh, maybe we can just get away with um, crafting another tier of those capacitors. Now, I have put the capacitors into our auto-crafting system, so it can craft them. Uh, let's just have a look. At least it can craft the basic first tier. However, um, they usually need, yeah, some dark steel ingots it normally needs for various things. So I haven't quite got all of that managed yet. Uh, although I thought that I would have dark steel ingots. It should be able to craft them. If we have enough, that is, it should be able to craft them. Eh, regardless, we could also be running out of crafting storage and other kinds of things, but I'll need to just diagnose that off camera. Most of it, it can craft anyway, and we just need to do a few more things. And if you want to use those, you can just look at the upgraded versions. So I showed this in the last episode, but two of the basic versions, and you get basically 5 million instead of 2 million, which is what the previous ones had, along with a double layer capacitor, which is pretty trivial for us right now. We can already make the these capacitors in the system once we make the, these capacitors, that is. And then that's where we get going. And yeah, so then we can go up one more time. So four of the basics and you get one vibrant, which is 25 million. So that I think should be more than enough to deal with this. We've got vibrant alloy ready. I've made that before, vibrant alloy and emerald in an autoclave. So nothing, nothing terrible there really. And that will just be a block you put right down right next to it. And then you walk away from after making some kind of um, bookmark. <laughs> You don't want to forget what this thing is, but it will come back to your base wirelessly, all the items. So it's pretty good. Nice amount of automatic mining. And I think we're good for the episode, really. So in this episode, we've got the farmer, which is going to automatically, it seems, plant and oh, it's already started. Does this also, also keep things hydrated? Because these don't appear to be disappearing again. So that's good. Uh, so yeah, it automatically seems to plant, and we can do the similar kind of things with this in that we can just put an ender chest here, and it will feed straight back into our system, wirelessly, at whatever range we like. So yeah, I'm not quite sure what we're going to process with canola. I'm sure we're going to get to diesel fairly soon, and that's going to need canola, but I don't think I'm going to do it here. I think what I'm going to do is move it uh, upstairs and then outside. If you remember, I had like a little vegetable patch right at the very start. It's out here. See this area? It's a nice kind of area already laid out for us. There was a pond underneath here, but other than that, this area is sort of nice. And I want to see just how big that farmer can actually uh, can process. So if I put it like here, then we have all this area it can use up if it needs to or if it can. And um, yeah, we'll get a whole bunch of canola. However, instead of going in straight into the system, what we may want to do is set up something locally that maybe converts into canola seeds and then stores those in um, storage drawers like this, you know, with some diamond upgrades or something. It can store many, many thousands of them. And then only when we need them to convert them do we actually take them into the system rather than just storing thousands, thousands, thousands of them inside our AE system. So yeah, just some thoughts. I'm sure all of you can put some comments down below about what you think so far. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Subscribe if you haven't already to the channel and click on the belly front notifications. I am planning to do an upcoming episode of um, Satisfactory. There is a new update out with trains, with nuclear power, and lots of stuff coming up there. So feel free to tune in for that. Otherwise, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time for some more Omnifactory.